Hi, this is Stephen Gregg, and I'm telling my story, which is the mindset of a trailblazer. And I just appreciate you guys watching my message because um, I've been sharing my heart and, and telling you my story about my life, about what I've been going through. And all of you that have been watching, I really appreciate that. And so I want to keep it going and just kind of give you what happened after, you know, I was married and, you know, we had some challenges, you know. So we, you know, like I said, we um, were um, in trouble because... We had done things the wrong way. God told us to have a pure relationship, and we chose to not do so. And, you know, like I said, we fell into impurity, and it was a really tough time during that time because we had just got married. But what happened after we got married, we realized something big. We learned that we have to pay the price um, to enjoy the benefits. And, and that's kind of the title of this message is that we're, we had to pay the price, and we did. We paid it in a big way. And so just a little insight about what happened after we got married. Um, we went to the Bahamas on our honeymoon. And we enjoyed, uh, we, we were there for about two weeks. And we started to enjoy it for about the first day. But after that, we argued almost every day from that point on. We were there for two weeks. I mean, it was got to the point where we were riding a moped one time. And I remember my, um, Jamie snatching my glasses off. And they were $200 glasses. And she broke my sunglasses. And I was so mad. I mean, we had arguments like crazy on our honeymoon. And then the only fun thing, I can't remember. I just want to tell you the story. We went, um, we went snorkeling. And I remember we got into this boat, and now if you know anything about me, you guys that do know me, my feet are really tender and, and soft, and so you know I, I had to wear those flippers because getting back on the boat is, is tough for me sometimes because the runs are really um, hard and they hurt my feet. So, But anyway, we got into this boat, and we were going to go snorkeling, and we are going to go snorkeling out in the ocean, not into a, um, a lake or anything like that. So we went out to the middle of the ocean, put on the snorkelers, and we were down there. And so we're looking around in the water, you know, peacefully. Jamie's on one side, I'm on the other side, and we're looking at the fish. And all of a sudden, a bunch of fish came in near me because a bunch of people were feeding them bananas. I didn't know fish ate bananas, but they do, obviously. So uh, all these fish were around me, and I said, Jamie, come over here, look at the fish. And so she came over, and she stuck her head in the water, and she screamed, ah! And when she screamed, I just took off. Boom, boom, boom. I was swimming back to the boat, and I flew back to the boat. And this was the scene. I'm flying back to the boat. She's screaming out in the water, and then I'm trying to get on the boat, but I'm, I can't get on the boat because I have the flippers on. And you know, they're really long, and I'm trying to get on those little runs that are right, real close to the boat, and I couldn't get on the boat because every time I tried to get on there, my flippers would hit the side of the boat, and I'm trying to get up, and Jamie's yelling, and everybody's like, take your flippers off. And I was like, I can't. My feet are hurt. And so it was just the most hilarious scene uh, because, you know, my soft feet didn't allow that to happen. And, and people are thinking, man, you just left your wife out there uh, for the sharks to eat. And, and she was like, well, why'd you leave me? And I was like, I thought you saw a shark. She was like, but then why'd you leave me? I was like, well, somebody had to be saved. You know, that was my mindset at the time. But it was just the most hilarious scene. Um, so that was about the most fun thing that we did on that entire vacation. Now, I can say it was probably, it felt like the longest two weeks in, in my life at that point. Um, but, you know, God was humbling us for not doing it his way. You know, he wanted us to have a pure relationship. And that church really um, strived on the relationships being pure up until you get married. And, and we chose not to do that, you know, because of the choices we made. You know, I still, even though I got baptized for the forgiveness of my sin, I was still a sinful man internally. I still had to grow through that process. And that was just the beginning of exposing who I was as a person. And so we got back from the, um, from the wedding and we realized, uh-oh, we're in trouble. So we went to the church and we confessed. And we confessed to the ministers. We confessed to our leadership. And she was leading the women's singles ministry. I was leading the men's singles ministry. And so we confessed to our ministry. And, you know, it was really humbling, a really challenging time of what we had to confess. And then, you know, we were brought before the church. So before the entire congregation, we had to confess our sin to the entire congregation. And um, that was probably the most embarrassing thing I've ever had to do and most um, devastating for me emotionally because I had just got up in leadership. I had never, you know, led anybody before that at all. And it was really tough. And so that was the beginning of a, a down time in my life because for the next seven years, it was literally hell on earth. So my wife and I now were married and then about a year later we had a child and it, we fought like cats and dogs. I mean, literally speaking, we fought all the time because, you know, she, there was a respect level from her to me that wasn't there. And then I used to always doubt, you know, did God put our marriage together or did I put our marriage together? Because what I didn't do, I didn't tell the truth. 
I lied before I got married, so I figured maybe God didn't put this marriage together, we did, and now we're being punished for it. So imagine being in a relationship with a woman that you thought you loved, but you you know, are, were having a challenge because you didn't think God put that relationship together. And that's how I felt for a long time. And so it made it really difficult to love my wife, to be kind to my wife, and it was really difficult. And we used to fight, I mean, some crazy fights. One time she slapped me one time, I had to call the police on her. One time I threw a, corn, a, a ear corn at her and it hit her in the chest or something. I mean, it was just crazy around our house before we had our child. And then, you know, the, to add insult to injury, we started working together at Aflac, you know, the company on TV with the duck. We started working together at Aflac, I was her manager. And, you know, that was fine, we did well financially, but it was a very difficult time because I was a very deceitful man at that time. I still had the character issues. So I would go out and mess around on her and you know, do things that was not uh, of becoming of a husband or especially as a disciple. So just because I got a disciple, became a disciple, that does not mean that I had lived a righteous life. I definitely um, had a sinful life and I had to continuously get together with people and confess and, and be open with people. And it was really a really, really tough time in our marriage for, because for those seven years, I did a lot of things that gave her all the reasons and all the rights to leave me. Um, she chose not to, and I'm so grateful that she chose not to leave me because I had character issues that I had to work through. And, um, you know, the brothers and sisters at the church used to teach me, and, and people in life and business associates used to teach me things that I needed to grow in and learn, and I started to work on learning those lessons. But at the time in the relationship, we hated each other. I mean, we um, hated each other to the point where I got to a point in around 2007, 2008, where you know I messed I messed up with somebody and and I basically um, I filed for divorce and she wanted to separate so we separated I filed for divorce and uh, that was a really challenging time because at this point now we have two kids my daughter was four years old my son was just born um, and you know now I'm looking at my two kids and I'm thinking do I want to be a statistic you know of of men that don't take care of their family and don't care that take care of the kids. Or do I want to do something different? Do I want to change? And so that was probably one of the hardest decisions I made at that time because, you know, what am I going to do? You know, it was a really difficult time, but, uh, you know, God's always at work. And there was a pivotal point in my time, in my life. There was a very pivotal moment. And I'll tell you what happened. Um, our church didn't allow us to go to church together because, you know, we were separated and it would have been weird at the church of how that works. So she was going to the church. I decided to go to a different church in a different city. And um, I started going there. And, you know, while I was there, the minister one time, he was preaching these good messages. But this one time he preached one message. And that one message changed the entire course of my life. Uh, and, this, and he got up and said something like this. This is a paraphrase, of course. He said something like, you know, if you're a disciple of Christ, if you're a follower of Jesus, um, and let's imagine you wore a t-shirt that said, I represent Jesus Christ. How would you act? And I was like, that's a great question. How would I act if I said I wore a t-shirt that said, I represent Jesus Christ? Because as a disciple of Jesus, that's what we're supposed to do, represent him. So I said, uh, how would I act? And I wrote down all the qualities. I'd be this, I'd do that, I'd be a great dad, I'd be a great husband. I said, I'd go back to my wife and repent. That was the exact words I said. So I said, okay, then that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I called her up. I left the church. I called her up and said, hey, Jay, I would like to get together with you and talk about our relationship and how we can mend things together. I made a decision that, you know, we need to be together and we're going to work this out. And she said, okay, well, let's get together. So we got together and we sat in the kitchen and we talked about the challenges and our communication and issues that we had. And now I had to rebuild trust because when you break trust like that, you know, it takes time to rebuild that trust. So I told her all the things I would do. I would be 100% above reproach. You can check my phone. You can check everything I'm doing. I am going to become different because I want our marriage to work. I don't want my kids to be a statistic, and I don't want to be, you know, like my dad when I grew up and not take care of their kids. I wanted to be different. And so she believed me, and she forgave me, and that was encouraging. And so from that point, you know, I had to start to learn how to be a, a godly man, a man of, of integrity, a man of character, a man of making the right decisions when the time is wrong. You know, sometimes things in life happen to you and, and sometimes you make the wrong decision. And I was that kind of guy that would make a lot of the wrong decisions. But I had to start to learn how to make the right decisions. 
So, you know, I realized that the Lord is steering the ship. He started steering the ship because over a period of time, I started to repent. And I made a decision. We were running this big office. We had about 10,000 square feet of office space. And we had about 100, 100, no, 700 people or so coming through every week to our presentation. And we're making good money, very, very good money. But at the time, we realized, you know what, this, this business, we need to change because there was a lot of atmosphere there that wasn't healthy. Plus, the real estate market changed on us, so we had to get out of that office for that reason, too. So we decided to get rid of the office. And so now I have, I go from making a lot of money to almost no money. Um, we were in foreclosure in our house, so we were losing our house. We were there for three and a half years in foreclosure. And, you know, virtually everything stopped. Our marriage was back together, but everything stopped. This is 2009 going into 2010. It was a really difficult time. I didn't know who I was anymore. I didn't know what to do for a career. I didn't know what to do to income to pay for my family. I didn't know, you know, what direction we're going. But this is what I did know. I made a decision that I was going to be committed to Jesus. That was one thing. That wasn't optional. I made a decision that I was going to be committed to my wife and my family. And I will provide and take care of my family. I knew that. I knew I was going to become different. Because uh, I knew I wanted something different, and I learned a sentence many, many years ago is that if you want something different, you have to become someone different. And I made a decision that day I was going to become different. And I did. I started to become different so, so much to the point where a few months later, our family got raised up in the same church as the most repented marriage in the church. <laughs> and, and it was awesome. So... We got raised up in front of all the leaders, and it was awesome, an awesome time, I remember it vividly. And then, of course, um, God then uh, had his plan. So in 2010, the Lord began his plan in my life. So my plan was to get back with my wife. My plan was to take care of my kids. My plan was to try to figure out a way to generate income. But God had his own plan. So what I'm going to share with you now is the plan that God did from this point. You know, in this next video, I'm going to be sharing with you, you know, God's plan. Because God has his plan of what he wants for our life. And so, on the next video, I'm going to really be sharing with you what the plan of God is for, for my life and what his plan was. And I'm going to share with you how uh, he took this ugly situation, this dirty, nasty situation, and used it for good. And so, uh, you know, I hope that you really you know, subscribe to our channel, you know, click the button down there and click the bell button. And so you can get all the notifications every time I upload a new video, because that'll really, you know, give you um, a notification of when these videos come out and, and you'll be able to learn this lesson. And I hope you're learning some lessons from this because, you know, God has used my life in a way that um, I would have never thought possible. And, and I, I thank you guys for allowing me to share it and, and being willing to listen. So click the bell button, you know, subscribe to our channel. And I'll be seeing you on the next video.